All right, so we got our equations down for circles and ellipses. And remember, you know, at the end it's r squared. If you wanted the unit circle, it'd really be 1 squared, which is 1. So that's why I have my unit ellipse down here. That's why I have 1 instead of r squared. Uh, but the only difference between a circle and an ellipse is that the ellipse has a horizontal stretch and a vertical stretch. Okay, that's the only difference. And remember that HK really stands for the point of the center. Okay, so the HK is the point of the center. All right, knowing that information, we're going to use that to help us apply the locus of an ellipse. Well, the locus of an ellipse is the points in a plane such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points is a constant. Okay, so there's all kinds of examples here. Um, if you ever want to check into it, and I'll kind of explain how this works here without having a visual, a really nice visual. Um, but so let's, let's kind of break it down. So the sum of the distances from the two fixed points is constant. Okay, so what we mean by that is this. So I have an ellipse here, and there's two fixed points drawn. And the sum of those distances is always the same. So for example, from these two fixed points, if you look at these blue lines, we picked a point on this ellipse. And if I added this distance, call it D1, and this distance D2, they would be the same as the red ones if I, add, if I put the sum together. So if I called this guy D3 and this piece D4, that would be the same as D1 plus D2. And the same would be the case if I picked you know, this point on the ellipse over here. And the spots from the fixed points, we could call this guy D5 and this guy D6. And if I added those together, they'd be the same. So basically we're saying that D1 plus D2 would be the same as D3 plus D4, which would be the same as D5 plus D6. Okay, and there's also another special property about this as well, but there's some specifics of those fixed points. Well, those fixed points, each focus, or plural we call the foci, go from that point to any point on the ellipse. And the distance we call the focal radius. So the focal radius is the segment from the focus to a point on the ellipse. So this is a focal radius, this is a focal radius. Um, so obviously they could be different sizes, but when we add those two together, it'd be the same for if I drew it to you know, this point. That focal radius plus that focal radius would equal those other two that we just did. And we just talked about this. The sum of the focal radii is always the same. Right? So if I draw any point on the ellipse, that plus that, the two blues, would equal the two reds. Right? This focal radius plus this focal radius. All right? So that's an important uh, property about these. And the last property that's the most important that's going to be the most useful is that the sum of the focal radii is actually the same length as the major axis. And this is where if I had a visual, it would be nice to see. So if I look back at this other picture, if you know, I had pins put in with strings, and this string got extended to here, and got extended to here. As I move this point, if I draw green, as I move it to this part of the ellipse, you would notice that it would stretch out and it would look just like this. It would have a nice big piece from one focus all the way to the side of the ellipse, and then it would have this other little piece which, if you think about it, if I move that over to this side, that would make the major axis, right? That would be the same as the major axis. So the sum of the focal radii is the same as the major axis. So if I go back to this example, let's just pretend this major axis was a total of 12. These two guys could be like 7 and 5, right? They'd have to total 12. So how does that work with our ellipse? Well. There's actually something that's kind of nice and fancy. And by the fact that we can use those properties that we just learned, we have something that's going to be nice and easy for this. So the major axis is 2A, right? Because we're calling that green segment A and this green segment A. So the major axis would be 2A. A semi-major axis, like half of the major, is just A. And the minor axis is 2B, because I got this top part B and this bottom part B. And let's have C be the distance from the center to one of the foci. And this is called the focal length. So C is going to stand for focal length. Remember that the sum of the focal radii, that's this guy right here, this, 
this piece and this piece is the same as the major axis right there 2a so that's why I'm allowed to say this is a and this is a because two of those give me the major axis which is 2a right so that's kind of the nice part and if you notice the nice if you notice what this does is it gives us a right triangle out of this and that's helpful and useful because of our Pythagorean theorem so if we consider that case so we can say that b squared plus c squared equals a squared and to be kind of specific what we mean by like the a and the b and the c the a is really the stretch of the major axis is what we'll see in our equation and the b is really the stretch of our minor axis and the c is that what was that called again the focal length so the distance from center to a focus so I find it easier to remember a squared minus b squared equals c squared and I'll show you what I mean by that in our couple examples here so if I wanted to find the foci of this ellipse first of all I'd have to graph it well the center you know there is no minus h or minus k here so they're both zero so the center would be zero zero and then a unit circle so which is our unit ellipse radius of one so my unit ellipse would be like this which would actually be a unit circle but then it gets stretched it gets stretched horizontally by five so that means this guy's gonna bump out to five and this guy's gonna bump out to five and it gets stretched vertically by three so this guy bumps up to three this guy down to three so let's redo this now so my center still zero zero and then we're at negative five three five and negative three so there's my ellipse I'll do my best to draw it in here something like that okay so what we just learned is that we can find the foci by taking a squared minus b squared equals c squared well what is a again remember a is the stretch of the major so is this automatically a this five because our equation really is you know x over a and y over b well the a is going to be the bigger of the two stretches so in this case the five is the a and the three would be the b so I would take a squared minus b squared to equal the focal length squared so I'm gonna take 5 squared minus 3 squared to equal c squared so really we got 25 minus 9 which is 16 equals c squared and if I square root that c is going to be plus or minus 4 so I'm gonna go four units in each direction from the center on the major axis well where's the major axis right here so I'm gonna go four units to the right which would be right here and four units to the left which would be right here so those would be my foci each focus so find the foci I would state you know negative four zero and four zero just like that okay well what happens if the stretches are different what if this bigger stretch is on the vertical now this becomes the a that's where that's tricky because usually the a is underneath the x and this becomes the B because the a always is the stretch of the major and the reason why that's the major is because if I look when I graph this well now what's my center this is really X minus negative 2 and this is really Y minus 1 remember X minus H and X minus K so we're at what negative 2 1 for the center so negative 2 1 and then we have a horizontal stretch of 4 so I had to go right 4 so 1 2 3 4 one, two, three, four. And a vertical stretch of five. So two, four, five, and two, four, five. And I'll draw on my ellipse. Oh, that's ugly. Sorry, I got an ugly ellipse coming here. So which one's the major axis? The, oh, well, the one that's longer. That would be this vertical piece right here. So there's my major axis. That's why this is now your A, the five. So we take a squared minus b squared equals c squared to find that focal length with c being the focal length. So a squared, which is 5 squared minus 4 squared equals c squared. So we got 25 minus 9, sorry, 16, I'm jumping ahead of myself, equals c squared. So 9 equals c squared. And we take the square root. So that means that c is plus or minus 3. So we go up 3 and down 3 now instead of left and right because we're on our major axis. 
So up three and down three. So my two foci would be at negative two, four, and negative two, negative two. Done. So the things to remember is that a squared minus b squared equals c squared, but the keys are that a is the stretch on the major. Remember, stretch on the major. The b is the stretch on the minor, right? So it's just the smaller one. And the c is that focal length, the length from the center. So those are our keys for finding the ellipses foci.